What's up? It is Kay Jones, and this is going to be an updated herb guide for Old School RuneScape. I have a previous herb guide on my YouTube channel, but it is not updated. Uh, this game keeps updating, and new herb patches are coming into the game. They're being moved around, things like that. It's kind of crazy, but Jagex has finally decided to not make any more herb patches in the game, at least for a very, very long time. So this should be a very updated guide. As of today, it's June 16th, 2020. Let's get started. I'll be going over the herb patches that have no requirements, and then I'll continue on to all the requirements that are needed for the future herb patches. All right, guys, the first thing I highly recommend before you start doing herb runs is to go ahead and have a spade in your inventory, a rake, and a seed dipper. You can buy all of this from the Grand Exchange if you're a main account or from a farming merchant here like Sarah and she's south of Falador. You can see that on your world map. So that's a great place to buy farming equipment. Something that I find very, very important is to have magic sectars or sectors. Um, the way you get that is completing fairy tale part one, Growing Pains. It's a quest. It's right here, and I highly suggest doing this quest because the magic sectars will give you a 10% increase in crop yield for herbs. The next thing you're gonna need is some teleport runes. I think 70 magic is perfect, a great all around magic level to teleport across the game. You don't see many runes on me because I will be primarily using my max cape to travel and do my herb runs, and it has all my teleports in my house. So that's what I will be using. However, for you, you will want a home teleport. You will be wanting a Camelot teleport. You'll be wanting all these teleports, which you will know by the end of the video because I'll go to every single location. Another reason why I suggest doing Fairy Tale Part 1 Growing Pains is because it will give you access to Fairy Tale Part 2 Kira Queen. And you want access to the fairy rings because they're going to allow you to travel across RuneScape to very convenient areas that will be great for farm runs. All right, guys, and I just wanted to quickly mention that you only need to start Fairy Tale Part 2, Kira Queen, up to a certain specific part of the quest to have access to fairy rings. So you don't even have to finish the entire quest, which is really nice. The next thing you need to know before we start doing herb runs is to get yourself some seeds. Your seeds are going to be based off of your farming level. For example, if you're 99 farming, you can plant pretty much any herbs in the game. But if you're like 15 farming, then you're going to be limit to, limited to marintals and guam leaves, as you can see here. So what you want to do is get yourself some herb seeds. Like I have snapdragon seeds, but if you go to your bank, um, hopefully you save some up or you can buy some from the Grand Exchange. Like I've got some Lantidime seeds, Renar seeds, Dwarf weeds, Torsals, pretty great, Amentos and Irrits. You just need some seeds and you plant them and that's how you're going to get your herbs. Uh, so if you're lower level, Toad Flax, etc. You kind of want to be planting things that are profitable. For example, you're going to start really profiting around 35 plus herb lore, 32, 38. Those are really good levels because Renars and Toad Flax are going to be gaining some pretty good profit. That's if they don't die. So anyway, buy some seeds or make sure you're saving them from monster killing, things like that. All right, let's finally get started. All right, guys. Sorry, very last thing that's very important is compost. I hate to have to explain all this, but some people just don't know. Compost is very important to put in your patches before you plant anything in them. Ultra compost is the best, followed by super compost and then regular compost. You can buy regular compost at a farming shop. This is Sarah's as I brought up earlier. Uh, super compost you can make or buy on the Grand Exchange and ultra compost you can make or buy in the Grand Exchange. I won't be explaining how to make those in this video. I just want to make sure that y'all know to get the most amount of herbs from your farming patches, you should always put compost and hopefully the best kind of compost in each one or each patch. All right, the first farm patch that pretty much is available to everyone on RuneScape. You don't need any requirements except, you know, the minimum farming level to start planting herbs. You can also start farming here. It's a great place. I think I have a video on my channel, how to start farming in old school RuneScape. And we start right here in Falador. It's not really Falador, actually. It's the allotment patch to the southeast of Falador. So here's Falador, walk down here. No requirements, but if you want to start doing a herb, 
herb runs, you need at least nine herb lore. So I've already got some herbs here. We're going to start picking them because I have some magic sectars on me, which gives that 10% yield. Um, no requirements here, but there are some quick ways to get to the Falador herb patch that I highly, highly, highly recommend, guys. You get this ring called an Explorer's Ring from doing the Lumbridge Achievement Diaries. So let's go over that real fast. The Lumbridge uh, Achievement Diaries are here. And uh, basically, you can just, if you complete these, you can complete the easy, medium, and hard. You're going to be getting this Explorer's Ring. Yeah, so it's the second ring, which will be the Medium Diaries at Lumbridge and it'll give you access to teleport to this farm patch. The great way to do that is just to hit teleport and it'll bring you south of the herb patch and run up and here you are, you're at the herb patch. So that's another great thing. So we're gonna go ahead and get some compost. You go ahead and put your compost in the herb patch, put your seed in there and then you're done with this patch and we'll head on to the next patch that has no requirements. Something I highly recommend to save inventory space is to use your herbs on the leprechaun. So now you have them noted and you have a bunch of more room in your inventory. All right guys, now we're gonna go to the next patch which is going to be in Catherby. The best way to get there, no requirements, it's just like on the other side of RuneScape and it's a really long walk for new players. So hopefully if you have 45 magic, highly, highly recommended. Take a Law Rune, five Air Runes and teleport there and it will take you to this location which is Camelot. So once you teleport it here, hopefully with your um, 45 magic, you are going to run to this allotment pad. You see this uh, farming patch? So just go ahead and follow my character. I'm just running to the southeast. So we're gonna go over here. There's no requirements, but you understand why it's kind of tricky to get to this location. You either need 45 magic to teleport all the way across RuneScape. You can buy also a teleport tab or you basically need to run all the way from like Falador across White Wolf Mountain, it's a pain. So I just highly recommend, you know, you get 45 magic or buy a um, teleport tab to Camelot. So anyway, I had a dead herb, as you can see, I'm gonna go ahead and put some new seeds in here and then we'll go to the next patch. Uh, while you're doing these farm run patches, you can also decide to do your flower patches. I don't see why not. I like to do limp roots. Uh, they're the best profit for main accounts, but as an Iron Man, they're really great for herb lore, so that's why I'm doing that. Um, but yeah, this is that second patch that is really great. I think the only problem is that it's far away, requires 45 farming, or to buy those expensive teleport tabs. But definitely worth it, guys. You're just going to make profit back on your herbs if you're a normal account. All right guys, so the next patch is going to be kind of tough to get to. And yes, it technically doesn't have any requirements. You could run to this patch location. It's northeast of Arduin. Here's the location right here. It's an allotment farming patch. So here's East Arduin. You just run all the way northeast. You can run um, west, southwest from Camelot if you would like. It's not that bad of a run. And yes, technically no requirements. However, to make this easier on you, I highly suggest 51 magic. 51 magic, guys. So you need two law runes and two water runes. Um, and you can do that. It does require the Plague City quest, but the Plague City quest is not that hard, guys. Get it done. It will give you the teleport to Arduin. Super good stuff. Highly recommend it. And then what you can do is you can run northeast, I believe, from the middle of Arduin up to this patch. There's also an easier way to get to this patch, but it even requires higher um, requirements to get with this easier uh, teleport access. So I'm running to the patch currently, but if you are ever curious on having an immediate teleport to the farming lot patch location, you can use the Arduin cloak, which is uh, received from the Arduin diaries. As I kind of mentioned the Lumbridge diaries, how there was like easy and medium, hard, uh, elite. Same with Arduin and it gives you access to the farm teleport. Check it out. Takes you to the farm. Pretty cool. It also gives you something called the monastery teleport but that's completely different. So here's that Arduin patch. Technically like I said no requirements. You can run across RuneScape um, from Camelot if you wish to get to this location or 
You can do Plague City, get 51 magic, bada bing, bada boom, teleport to Arduin, run northeast, or you could start doing the Arduin Diaries, which I highly recommend you do your diaries, guys, and it will give you a very quick access to the teleport. If you have the Elite Diary done, you get unlimited teleports a day to the farm patch location. If you have the hard done, I think it's a limited amount, medium limited amount, etc. But it's definitely worth doing, guys. All right, guys, so the next farming patch does have a requirement, but it's a very, very simple requirement. It's going to be in Mortania. I don't know if y'all ever heard of like the famous swamp like Dix or whatever, and he like lives in the Mortania swamps. If you haven't, you need to get to do that, you know what I'm saying? It's this farming patch, and it's a really scary patch because it's like near vampires in these swamps and shit. But not to worry, it's actually really easy to get there. My recommendation is to do the quest Priest and Peril um, because that will give you access to go to the Mortania Swamp location in RuneScape. Priest and Peril is the quest requirement. However, if you want to make it an even enjoyable experience and you can get to the patch rather quickly, I suggest doing the Ghost Ahoy quest. The Ghost Ahoy quest will give you this Ecto file. See what I'm doing? So it's like this little vial. And if you empty it, it sucks your character into the ground, you refill your vial, and if you go northwest from this location, well, actually, almost directly west, just run west, bada bing, bada boom, you're gonna keep running west, and your, your character will run to this farming patch. And it's unlimited teleports, guys. Like, it's a perfect teleport to get you out of dangerous situations. It's great. So this is a really, really, really good teleport. So you need to do Priest in Peril to be able to at least run all the way over to this patch. I don't find it worth running across RuneScape for an herb patch. I like to be as efficient as possible so you can do herb runs as often as you can. Um, so go ahead and do that Priest in Peril and then do the quest Ghost to Hoy. It's actually, in my opinion, a fun quest and you can get that Ecto file as a reward, and that will give you that quick teleport, and you can just run west, and you're there. All right, guys, the next patch is kind of complicated, and if you're just coming back to RuneScape, old school RuneScape, you're not even gonna know what this place is. It's called Zaya or Corrind. Oh, God. I don't even know if I can spell this. So, Zaya is this new, like... <laughs> landmass and it's overwhelming as crap but it's a great location to do farming because you, it prevents your patch from dying so if you go to to type in Corin or Zaya like I did and you you zoom in um and you go to this house called the Hosidius house there's this farming patch here um I highly recommend using this farming patch because your herbs will never die from this location. So it's wonderful. In fact, nothing will die at this location. Your allotments, your flowers, nothing. And it's wonderful. However, it does require 50% Hosidious favor. I'm not going to explain how to get favor or anything like that in this video. I highly suggest how to get Hosidious favor and Google that. You can either Google it or watch a YouTube video. So for Hosidious favor, you need 50% to be able to use the herb patch, which is worth it, guys, because when you plant your herb in that patch, it does not die, um, which is fantastic. So if you go to your little quest book little area, if you go to this Corin favor, you'll see all these like houses, right? Hosidious is the one that you want 50% in. You're going to have to do some research on how to get that. Um, another thing is you're going to want to get this talisman called the Xerix talisman. Um, so X-E-R-I-C-S talisman. You can Google how to get that. But if you go to the teleport menu, I have it built in my house. When you first get this talisman, you will, you will not have it in your house. You'll have it simply in your inventory and such. Once you charge it with lizardman fangs, um, it will give you the option to teleport to um Xerix Glade and Xerix Glade is basically where this location where this farming patch is that's the quickest teleport 
but it does require, you know, 50% Hosea's favor and that Xerix talisman. And not only is it Xerix talisman, you have to charge it with lizardman fangs. It's not that hard. It's actually very simple. If you just look up lizardman fangs and the Xerix talisman, it's not that hard to get. It takes probably about 20 minutes, so it's worth it. If you're not in the mood to learn on how to do that, you could probably use the... Um, trying to think of the next best way it's like this tithe farm mini game teleport there's this little tithe farm here and if you go to your mini game teleport and see this tithe farm right here you can teleport there and it should be able to take you to that teleport location and you can run from this little mini game teleport location to this patch Lastly, the next thing I would assume you can do is to use a skilling necklace, teleport to the woodcutting guild, which is right here in Old School RuneScape, and you can run all the way to this patch as well. Truth is, just get your 50% Hosidious Favor, get yourself a Xerix Talisman, charge that baby up, and eventually, if you have a great construction level, you can put that Xerix Talisman in your house for unlimited teleports. So, and this patch is 100% worth it because you, nothing dies in this patch. You, you still want to compost it because it'll give you some extra herbs, but you don't have to worry about losing profit or anything like that. Um, this is one of the very few patches that allows your crops not to die. And that goes also for your flowers, it goes for your allotments, it goes for everything. It won't die in the Zaya patch. So I highly recommend getting that favor, which won't take you that long, and then getting that Xerix talisman and charging it with lizardman things so you can teleport across Zaya. The teleport is the um, Xerix glade. Alright, the next herb patch is in the Trollheim Stronghold. So, if you're not familiar with the Trollium Stronghold, basically a bunch of, like, trolls live there. And this patch is also disease-free. There's many, many different ways to get to this patch. However, there is a requirement. Even though it's a disease-free patch, yay, none of your herbs die, it's great. You have to do a particular a quest to be able to access it. And that quest is locked behind other quests in RuneScape. Is it worth it? Yes. Is it a good goal? Yes. The name of the quest is My Arms Big Adventure. So do that quest because it is worth it and it will unlock even greater things later on. So once you have done the quest My Arms Big Adventure, you should be able to teleport to this Trollheim teleport location. I, I'm not 100% sure if there's another quest that you have to do to be able to use the Trollheim Teleport. Um, from my understanding that you have to do the Edgar's Ruse quest. So in order to get to this patch to be efficient, you kind of need to do My Arms Big Adventure and Edgar's Ruse to be able to do this herb run efficiently. On top of that, you're going to need 61 magic so you can use the teleport. It's annoying, but is it worth it? Absolutely. I mean, this is starting to get top tier game stuff, guys. Trollheim, as you can see, is kind of, or Trollium is like north of the White Wolf Mountain type of deal. And it's like in all these twists and turns, there's birth rope here. And it's a really cool area of RuneScape. In fact, God Wars is north of here. Anyway, so what you can do is. Um, basically use your agility that your character hopefully has. If not, you'll just have to run around all these crevices. And so you'll teleport to the Troll Stronghold once you've done the Edgar's Ruse quest. And you'll basically have to run to this patch. There are many shortcuts that you can take to be able to get to this patch. It's a little bit overwhelming on the requirements that can be needed. You can climb this rock shortcuts if you have the achievement diaries done for the... Oh god. I think it's the core... Oh god, no, no, no. Western provinces? I think if you have Western provinces or Fremenic, I don't... It's pretty much Western provinces. If you have the hard done, I think you can go up this rock and then you'll be at the herb patch. But let's say you don't have any of those diaries done and you're like, bro, I don't have any of those diaries done. I just did the quest Edgar's Rude and I just did My Arms Big Adventure. Just show me how to get to the patch with the least amount of requirements. So you're gonna go through here and climb up this troll ladder. 
be very careful from the aggression of the trolls. And here you are, bada bing, bada boom. There's something even easier though, and to get to this location, which I am going to explain for y'all. Okay, so the next best place or best way to get to this location, um, the easiest way is after you complete My Arms Big Adventure, it allows you to um, make do the quest Making Friends With My Arm. <laughs> and I know that sounds really weird and kind of gross, but if you do the quest My Arms Big Adventure and then you will have the access to do Making Friends With My Arm, that will allow you to further unlock a teleport that you can put in your house um, or you can make a teleport tab um, to get to that location, which is 10 times easier. Basically, I have this teleport in my house that allows you to go to the troll stronghold without going through those, you know, extra steps. And to be able to unlock that, you need to do the quest Making Friends With My Arm, which the prerequisite for that quest is My Arm's Big Adventure. But the minimum quest that you need to do to access this patch is My Arm's Big Adventure. This patch will always be safe. Your herbs will never die. However, um, if you want the quick teleport to Trollheim, you should probably do also the quest Edgar's Ruse. So yeah, it seems like a lot of requirements, but this is one of those patches that are definitely worth unlocking since nothing ever dies and just more profit for mains. All right, guys, so let's go to the next herb patch. I have to kind of think about it. It's in this place called Wayus or Wayus, yeah. And the way you get there is basically by using this icy basalt tab. Um, this is higher gameplay, you know, it's by completing the quest, making friends with my arm, as I told you. Uh, making friends with my arm is just an amazing herbler quest because it unlocks this patch and better teleports. It's just really great. For some reason, the troll quest series is just really good for during herb runs. This patch as well is um, disease free. You can teleport here by using this icy basalt. You can you can Google that phrase and see how you can make it. But the number one requirement is doing the quest, making friends with my arm. Um, but yeah, basically that's what this is. It's a higher tier. Uh, quest for sure, but it's one of the three places in RuneScape where your herbs will never die. Wayus, Troll, Stronghold, and um, Zaya. So, all right, we're going to come up to the last two herb patches now. All right, guys, so now we're going to go to that next farming patch. Um, I highly suggest doing Fairy Tale Part 2, or at least starting it so you have access to the fairy rings. As we kind of already discussed, I have a fairy ring in my house. However, there are fairy rings all ac across RuneScape. You do need a Draymond staff in most cases. So we're going to go to the Farming Guild. Now, this Farming Guild has an herb patch available to you to use in the game. It's one of you know, all the herb patches available to us, but it does have, you know, requirements. Um, but the farming guild overall is an incredible, um, an incredible add on to RuneScape. And I highly suggest that you get used to not just this one part of the farming guild, but all of it. It unlocks the Hesporia boss and etc. It's just a great asset to RuneScape. But anyway, guys, so. If you've unlocked your fairy ring teleports, which I highly suggest you do by starting Fairy Tale Part 2, go to CIR, and it is north uh, east of the Farming Guild. You need at least 60% Hosidious Favor to enter the Farming Guild. As you can see, it's down here. There is another way to access the Farming Guild without using fairy rings, though. So, if you've been in the Farming Guild, I think at least once, you can use a skilling necklace. And uh, I think, don't take that, take that with a grain of salt, but I have this um, jewelry box in my house, which has like all of these necklaces. And a skilling necklace you can buy or make, you can buy it on the Grand Exchange, etc. If it's charged, you can go to the Farming Guild. So here we are. So 
this farming guild is so much to explain, guys. I mean, there's not just an herb patch. But, there's these doors to the farming guild that lock you based off of your farming level. Obviously, I'm 99 farming, so I can enter every access of this guild. But, um, there's the beginner tier, there's the intermediate, and then the master, I think. Um, this herb patch that you will hopefully want access for, to, to, for your herb runs, it requires 65 farming to enter. Now, do remember, you need 60% Hosidious Favor to enter the farming guild at all. And then you need 65 farming to be able to get into the intermediate tier. That will also give you access to another herb tree and then also the Hespori boss, if you're not familiar. I highly recommend watching a guide on the farming guild with RuneScape. You can do these things called farming contracts. It's wonderful. I mean, this is where I got 99 farming, was just farming all day long in this guild. Um, and I find it quite relaxing, and it actually made the farming skill um, just extremely excited. Your, your, your uh, herbs can die here, though. They're not, they're not uh, a safe patch. But yeah, 60% uh, Hosidious favor as we discuss on how to get that and or how to start getting that and then of course 65 farming to enter this farming gear tier which is going to be on the west side of the farming guild all right guys last but not least is the hardest requirement herb patch um i'm almost i don't think your herbs are protected here they can still die at this location but this is the last herb patch I'm going to show you. It is probably the hardest one um, to unlock. It requires the Mortania Elite Diaries. So Mortania Elite Diaries, which I think requires crazy stuff like 92 fishing, minimum, things like that. So it's a pretty hard requirement, but I'm going to show it to y'all anyway. Uh, you're going to use your Ectophile from the Ghost Ahoy quest, as I explained earlier in the video. And once you have that elite diary done, you get this extra herb patch, which is really nice and worth it if you do herb runs. So once you're in um, this port, I think it's Paz, Fats Maze, Fats, Fats Maze, whatever, you run south of that, that ecto file and start going east. And basically you're gonna want to go to Harmony Isle. This also requires, I think, the quest, the Great Brain Robbery. So not only do you need to have the Elite Mortania Diaries, but you also need to have the quest, the Great Brain Robbery, completed. Um, so, but basically, you're going to travel from this pirate, get off the ship. As I said, this is, this is about the highest requirement place to start farming, guys. You'll get on Harmony Isle by trans... Uh, transporting from Brother Tranquility. He will go ahead and transport you. This is the island where you do basically the Great Brain Robbery Quest. Once again, you need to have the Elite Mortania Diaries to go to this location, and it's an extra herb patch. However, most people don't use this patch because it, it requires a lot, you know? Like, the Elite Mortania Diaries is not easy. On top of that, the Grain Break... Great brain robbery i would say is not like a mid-tier quest i would say it's on the higher tier i think there's also an allotment patch that is unlocked for you too so i, I just wanted to point that out for y'all's knowledge if you wanted to go for the elite diaries as like a goal to unlock all of the herb patches in runescape go for it is it necessary no does it protect your herb no it can still die all that great stuff so anyways I hope you guys liked this video. Give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to my channel for my future videos. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.